97 Israel News is made possible thanks to your generous donations. Shalom, good evening. This is TV7 Israel News broadcast to you from Jerusalem and in today's top stories. Sporadic rocket fire and clusters of balloons rigged with explosives continue to plague Israel's southern communities, prompting Israeli retaliatory strikes against Hamas installations in the central Gaza Strip. Prime Minister Bimi Netanyahu highlights advancing efforts by both Israeli and American teams on the work of mapping West Bank territories that are set to become part of sovereign Israel in accordance with U.S. President Donald Trump's so-called deal of the century. Hundreds of Israelis and visitors gather at Jerusalem's Western Wall for a mass prayer to keep the deadly coronavirus at bay. Sporadic rocket fire and clusters of balloons rigged with explosives continue to plague Israel's southern communities. Palestinian Islamists launched two projectiles indiscriminately from the Hamas-controlled Gaza Strip toward Israeli territory on Saturday. Rocket alert sirens sounded in the Israeli agricultural community of Kisufim, forcing its residents to rush into bomb shelters within the home front command's instructed 15 seconds. Thankfully, both rockets exploded in unpopulated areas, causing no injuries or damage. In a retaliatory response, Israeli fighter jets and attack helicopters struck a number of Hamas terror targets in the central Gaza Strip. The IDF spokesperson's unit wrote in a statement that the targets included a military compound used by the Hamas terror organization and that the destruction of the installation will impede the Hamas terror organization's future abilities. The military further underscored that the IDF views any kind of terror activity aimed at Israel with great severity and is prepared for various scenarios, while highlighting the fact that it views Hamas as responsible for all events transpiring in the Gaza Strip and emanating from it, and that the Islamist group will bear the consequences for its actions against Israeli civilians. Meanwhile, in Jerusalem, Israeli Prime Minister Bimi Netanyahu held a meeting with local council heads of Israeli southern communities that are subject to the continued terror-related attacks that emanate from the Gaza Strip. During the meeting, Netanyahu updated the council heads on the latest developments regarding the Hamas-controlled territory and told them that Israel was prepared for any scenario, including a wide-ranging military operation. Nevertheless, the Israeli premier reportedly revealed that it would be challenging to launch a significant military campaign against the jihadist organizations in the coastal Palestinian enclave two weeks before Israel's national parliamentary elections, which are scheduled to be held on March 2nd. In spite of the complex political situation in Jerusalem, however, if the situation deteriorates further, Netanyahu emphasized a military option remains on the table. Earlier in the day, Prime Minister Bimi Netanyahu told his cabinet ministers that an Israeli team was working together with their American counterparts on the work of mapping West Bank territories that will become part of sovereign Israel in accordance with U.S. President Donald Trump's so-called deal of the century. Speaking at the weekly cabinet meeting in Jerusalem, Netanyahu underscored that the process of mapping will be completed as soon as possible which will effectively allow for the reintegration of parts of the Jewish ancestral homeland into modern-day Israel for all eternity. עבודת המיפוי שכבר החלה היא בעיצומה, האמריקנים מצידם יעבדו איתנו, נשלים את המלאכה במהירות האפשרית. אנחנו הופכים את חבלי המולדת שלנו ביו"ש לחלק ממדינת ישראל לעד. During the meeting, Netanyahu also reiterated the improving relations between the Jewish state and the Arab and Muslim world. In reference to a meeting he held earlier this month with the leader of Sudan, Abdel Fattah al burhan Netanyahu revealed that Jerusalem and Khartoum will work together with the goal of normalizing relations between the two countries. <laughs> להרחבת חומי שיתוף הפעולה, זה מה שסיכמתי עם, בעצם עם נשיא סודאן והמטרה היא להגיע בסוף לכינון יחסים 
נורמליים, נורמליזציה ויחסים מדיניים בין ישראל לסודאן. The efforts to normalize relations between Sudan and Israel have already yielded some results. For the first time in history, an Israeli airliner flew through Sudanese airspace in a flight from Congo's Njili International Airport in Kinshasa to Tel Aviv's Ben Gurion International Airport. While the rapprochement between Jerusalem and Khartoum is the latest in Israel's warming ties with the Muslim and Arab states, Netanyahu emphasized that it is only the tip of the iceberg. צריך להבין, אנחנו בעיצומו של תהליך של נורמליזציה עם מספר גדול מאוד של מדינות ערב ומדינות מוסלמיות. אתם רואים רק חלק מזה, זה קצה הקרחון שהוא מעל פני המים, מתחת לפני המים יש עוד תהליכים רבים שמשנים את פני המזרח התיכון, ממקמים את ישראל כ... גם כמעצמה אזורית וגם כמעצמה עולמית. זה פירות של המדיניות שלנו, שאנחנו מטפחים את העוצמה של ישראל. The Israeli premier also touched on the latest developments pertaining to the global coronavirus outbreak. Netanyahu revealed that while no cases of the virus have been identified in Israel, three Israelis that were quarantined aboard a cruise ship in a Japanese port remain hospitalized in Japan. בניגוד לציפיות, עד לרגע זה, לא הגיע נגיף, לא ידוע לנו על הידבקות בארץ, יש כמובן אפשרות כזאת, אבל זה עדיין לא קרה, אף על פי שכבר הגיע מקרה ראשון למצרים לפי הדיווחים בתקשורת. במקביל אני רוצה להודות לשר הבריאות שפעל יחד עם צוותו כדי להביא את הישראלים על האונייה שנמצאת ביפן אלה שלא נדבקו, הם יבואו לארץ וייכנסו לבידוד. אלה שנדבקו נשארים לפי החלטת ממשלת יפן שם, ואנחנו שלחנו להם סיוע רפואי, רופא, כדי שיעזור להם. אנחנו כולנו כמובן מתפללים לשלומם. Per Netanyahu's instruction, 12 Israeli nationals that are set to return to Israel will be quarantined for two weeks upon arrival. In light of the spread of the deadly disease across the Far East, hundreds gathered at Jerusalem's Western Wall for a mass prayer to keep the coronavirus at bay. The prayer was an initiative of both local rabbis and Jewish community leaders. It drew both Jews and Gentiles alike in a joint prayer to God to take pity on those afflicted and grant them full health from the deadly disease. <laughs> אנחנו מרגישים את הכאב שלהם, אנחנו מרגישים את המצוקה של אנשים שחולים, שנמצאים בהסגר, שנמצאים בחשש, ואנחנו פותחים את הלב שלנו עוד ועוד כדי שהקדוש ברוך הוא ירחם עליהם וישלח להם רפואה שלמה. Because in this uh, special time, some of the people, uh, they are very sensitive with the virus. They, they are afraid of uh, to getting closer to Chinese people. But uh, the rabbis, the Jewish people, they did not say no to China. So I think uh, it's a very friendly. Thank you for watching us. You can also watch us at tv7israelnews.com or tv7.fi. For any comments, please send your emails to israelnews at tv7.fi. And I'd like to thank all of our supporters as your financial donations as well as your prayers are the reason TV7 Israel News is made possible. I'd like to continue to encourage you, pray for the peace of Jerusalem as well as the peace and salvation of Israel. I'm Jonathan Hassan, have a Erev Tov and Shavua Tov. We'll see you again tomorrow at the same time.